Good evening and welcome to Rinkside with Red Hockey. I'm Paul Shuttleworth with my co-presenter Alan Gold. The Telford Tigers take on the Guildford Flames tonight. Jonathan Weaver returned to the Telford Tigers team last weekend. A little earlier on, I caught up with him. So you enjoying being back on the ice? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a bit of a tough grind, you know, seven months without playing a game. It's, uh, it's a long time for anyone, but when you get to my age, it feels, <laughs> feels a bit longer. So, uh, yeah, it was good to get back on last week and, uh, you know, just be, be in the room, be a part of it again. And um, it's been quite a tough start to the season for the Tigers generally. Things sort of been settled down a little bit now. It seems that way, yeah. It was nice. It was nice the boys started winning before I came back, so it was, you know, took a bit of a pressure off. Um, but yeah, it's been a rough start. You know, teams have improved, um, and you know, it's, you know, you win the league one year. It's tough to, it's tough to go and follow that the next year. So you know, we, we found it hard to start to start with, but uh, you know, we're firing all cylinders now. And we'll get going. And it's Guildford tonight, which are always very tough competition. Yeah, you know, last year we, we kind of had their number, you know, I think we beat them every game, but uh, first game of the season down there, they beat us, I think, just, I think we had a, we, we played well against them, so, yeah, we'll be looking for much the same tonight, just to uh, keep this going. Thank you, Jonathan, good luck with tonight's game. No worries, cheers. So the Telford Tigers take on the Guildford Flames. Jonathan was saying there that they had their number every time they played them last season, but Guildford always a tough team to beat. They are a tough team, you know, they've been tough for many, many years, they've got a good outfit there. The Tigers played them uh, earlier on in the season and came away on the wrong side of a 2-1 scoreline. Uh, the Flames have come here tonight on the right side of a 3-2 overtime victory last night, so they'll be flying. And there's a little bit of a shake-up of the Flames, I haven't seen them play this year, but um, there's quite a lot of depth to the squad. There's a lot of depth to the squad, you know, uh, the, the big move of course is David Longstaff, who's now gone up to Whitley Bay, uh, a big shake-up for them, but uh, the, the team's gelled very well, the imports are playing together well. Let's take a look at the first period action. So the start of the game, referee Miller checks in with the goal judges. They get the light to indicate that they're ready to go. He checks in with the timekeeper's bench and drops the puck. Guildford win it back into their end. Christofferson generating the play. Quick feet, Christofferson takes it from Dale White and then Hemmings loses his footing into Dale White and he's White's marking the point man now as the puck's down deep in the corner Hemmings picks it up for Guildford cycles into the corner Christofferson held up well by Maynard the puck goes round the back of the net into the corner and now it's retrieved by Paul Dixon he comes down from the point the puck at the back of the net Christofferson out to Dixon swings his stick at it but didn't get much wood to it it drifts over towards oh, and, and it's a the loose net. puck and Christofferson Danny Rose I think got to the puck deflected it slowed it down Christofferson was on the back post sees the opportunity and just pops it in the back of the net for goal number one for the Guildford Flames so now Maynard goes across to Zabo now a steal from Miller, walks in, shoots oh. and a great save from Wall, the puck drops down, he swings at the tipper attempt but you got a 1-0 on from Joe Miller, got the steal on the blue line, walks in and it was Wall that prevented that being the first Tigers goal on the clock, the Flames up 1-0 but since that the possession has been in the black shirts of the Telford Tigers. Marcus Maynard takes it behind the net, held up by hard work there from Mela Chirino, really putting the Telford defence under pressure. The stretch pass comes across to Adam Taylor, takes a deflection. Taylor comes oh, steaming well down and forces Taylor. the body. He finishes the hit on Godfrey and works hard. It's back in neutralised. Maynard across to Taylor, who then dumps it in, tries to skate around Godfrey, and Godfrey's wise to him this time and forces him much wider to yeah. slow down the quick wheels of young Adam Taylor. Plant gets the turnover. Taylor in front, oh, shoots, and a deflection from Godfrey's stick forced that into the corner but a good opportunity and work rate from the Taylor-Plant combination Gospel clears the puck he makes the save the rebound comes down it goes under his body he's lost his stick and it was cleared out by Jonathan Weaver Gospel came up with a great save the deflection came off the boards the loose puck then comes under his body he didn't have a stick at that time and Jonathan Weaver stands in the crease clears the puck down the ice to allow Sam Gospel to regroup and pick up his stick a hairy chance for the Guildford Flames and nerves for the Telford Tigers fans watching on. And this period's flown through. We've been given time. Yeah, it's been either. very end and hardly any stoppages. I think uh, three or four offsides is pretty much all we've seen. We haven't had an icing call yet. Weaver forward to Miller, drives hard over the blue line, the puck's bobbling a little bit, he swings it in front to try and find Silverthorne, comes out to Weaver on the point, Qu quick hands just dazzle Duggan, yep. and that's the experience, oh, Weaver, and the puck 
was loose. Silverthorne took it off the Guildford defenseman's stick. Yeah. Swings his stick, fires it in the back of the goal. And now we've got a 1-1 tied game at 16 minutes and 44 seconds. And coach Tom Watkins will breathe a tie of relief because you don't want to be going in at the break a goal down. So it's good that the Tigers and the work rate of Silverthorne there was able to level them back up. Well, that's taken the pressure off a little bit. The puck bounced around. I think Silverthorne just looked down and it appeared at his stick and he had nothing else to do but to put it in the net. He drops it back to Phillips. Now, the Guildford passing is Davis very, very good. Drives well. forward and Guildford get the turnover. Once again, it was Ericsson's that just forced the play in neutral ice. And if, if there's anything I could say to the Guildford. Fabrea through off the boards, walks in and the it underneath. Stephen Wall went down on his pads. Fabrea drives down the right wing, picks the puck up off the boards, curls round, skates in front of Wall. He drops with his pads tight on the ice and somehow Max Pabrea put it through the five hole under his body into the back of the net on 19 minutes and 16 seconds the Telford Tigers take the lead 2-1 with a great goal from Max Pabrea and as the time ticks by at the final seconds London puts it off the boards on the right side to find toe drops it forward Hemming shoots, skates in to shoot and then the clock ticks by at the end of the first First period, it's the Guildford Flames 1, the Telford Tigers 2, in what was a pretty even period. That was quite a first period of hockey, very end-to-end -end as this period begun. We saw some brilliant hockey there, as you say, end-to-end, -end, very entertaining for the crowd. Uh, as I mentioned in the commentary, I think the thing that's letting Guildford down at the moment is they're passing. They're not, they're not stringing enough passes together and the Tigers are forechecking well and not allowing them to do that. Yeah, the Guildford Flames were first off the mark, 5 minutes 42 seconds. Christofferson on the back post, saw a loose puck, popped it in the back of the net. Well, that's exactly right and, uh, and that was his poor marking from Telford. He should have been allowed to stand there on his own as he was and, and a guy like him is not going to miss from a position like that. And he didn't. Then it took 11 minutes for Jason Silverthorne to get Telford back into the game but after they conceded that game their intensity was there they never backed off in fact if anything their intensity got better after the Guildford goal and, and that's quite adverse to what we've seen in the past you know when the Tigers have been scored against first we've seen the heads drop and tonight it was exactly the opposite they picked the game up and they've gone into the end of the period with a 2-1 lead yeah it was 19 minutes into that period that uh, an amazing hard skate from Max Bebrea and he his head goes down it's like a steam train coming through and I didn't think he was going to get back in front of Wall. Wall read it well, went down, and he literally popped it underneath his pads. So in the split second it took for those pads to hit the ice, the puck was in the back of the net, and Tom Watkins will be pleased going into that break. 2-1 up. He'll be relieved because against a professional outfit like Guildford, you don't want to be going in down, you know, to take the lead into the end of the first period is brilliant. But as you say about Bebrea, I don't think there's anything any goalkeeper could have done about that. No. Fantastic. The steam train was coming. Let's take a look at the second period action. Referee Miller blows his whistle, calls the players in. He's checked with the goal judges. And Zabo wins the draw. Goes back to Miller. Miller passes back to Weaver. Weaver, D to D pass to Marcus Maynard. Interesting that Weaver's come out this time with Maynard and not Zajac. Now Melanchorino breaks it out. Puts so it on the right side, then takes McKinney and... Piatek take a line change. Fabrea on the left side. Oh, oh that's massive a hand. hit from First behind, and the referees in. called it as well. And that was London, London that went in on Max Fabrea. He gets Bebrea. up grimacing, but a clear. It was 82 London that takes. And Max Fabrea is going off for a line change, but he's double charging the penalty. penalty. The law of averages say they keep doing it. They're going to get a goal. Absolutely. But the Flames are boxing up well. It's out with Weaver. Big shot. Oh, he feints it. Puts it along In the front ice. of Miller, Miller digging at the puck. Wall covering it up, but Miller was there and using that stick just to poke around to make sure he got hold of it. Well, Weaver went for the big shot. He come down and slowed his shot down mid-stroke, put it along the ice, and Miller tried for the tip in, and Wall was behind it. Weaver curls back into his own end. Walks it out, puts it on the right side, Plant picks it up, carries it over the blue line. 
Walks down, goes behind the back of the net, circles in, takes a shot. Ooh. And it was into the body of Stephen Wall. And Wall thought it had dropped to his feet. It went up in the air and back down into the corner. And for a split second, he didn't know where that was then. Well, Plum did well. He carried it all the way around and got the shot away. As we used to he see. sort of walked it up into the, the high Would slot area. Again, as White gets the shot. Switches in. sides now. Novak is, Plant is White being, in front. Novak was being mugged a bit by Duggan there, but was giving as good as he gets, as always. The pressure's on from Telford. And Novak then dumped the Guildford defenseman. Kick off a little and bit. Duggan is going for him. He's reaching across with his stick. And Duggan was literally laid down by Novak in retaliation to that one I just said. And Duggan, not a Happy camper. Well, what happened? Godfrey got hold of the puck and he pushed it into the pads. He pushed it into the pads to try and get a whistle, and that's when it all, you know, when you get this. Yeah, Nova was right there yeah. digging in. We'll be back with more ice hockey action straight after the break. Welcome back to the Telford Tigers versus the Guildford Flames. And now, Babrea and Weaver at the back of the D. Oh, and a break coming from Matt Toe was the last man. And Weaver dropped onto one knee, swung the stick across. Or well, that could have been very dangerous for the Tigers. Miller just had a shot on that. The, the, the puck slid off his stick. Silver Silverthorne to the back post. Miller, Miller walks in, digs in deep. And Duggan puts his own netminder in the back of the, back of the net. Now, a drive back from Godfrey. Comes up the right side. Duggan drives forward, Christofferson heads for the net, he was the danger man last Ooh, time, gets, gets it on his on backhand and tries to tip it across, but there's not enough angle on it, so it goes into the corner, now Silverthorne hits the halfway line, gets a stretch pass Godfrey pushes him towards the corner, hustles him in the corner Silverthorne comes out the back of the net, still with the puck, backhands it in front Scott gets a deflection up There's on the point. Shot. Shoot! It's right. and it gone in. In. No. It's gone in! I don't know whether it yes. went in from Dan Scott or Peter Zarbo. But all I could see from here was Peter Zarbo celebrating. Yeah. You saw his arms go in the air no, and he Scott. skates out to Dan Scott. I don't know whether Zarbo either got a touch to it or a deflection on it. But boy, that was a great timely goal for the Telford Tigers. 34 minutes and 30 seconds forward. Kral. Tips it forward to Dixie, oh, bounces over his stick, well and he was well kept in. in by the backhand of Myers. It was literally bobbing on the blue line. Now Rebrea. on the ice. Drops it. Oh, for the first time shot, shot from Miller. Shot. Miller wound up. Rebrea saw it, just dropped the puck gently back, and Miller connected with a big shot. It deflected from the blocker, dropped down, and Stephen Wall read that well, because that was a rocket from Joe Miller. Davis up to the high slot to Babrea, back to Maynard, puts it off the boards, runs it back down into the corner. Davis, a walk in there and a swing from Hill, and now Guildford skate the puck out, comes across to Melo took it badly on his backhand, so drops it off to London, and, and Babrea collides with Davis, he's and Babrea's... He is injured, look, he's yeah. not right, because he stayed down again. And, and Danny Davis isn't looking too good as well. The two Telford players collided in neutral ice, and Babrea is... I think he's, he's carrying an injury from a big he's, hit He's before. doubled over. and uh, but Could it be something with his back, maybe? I don't, I don't know. I said... Because he, he went it, down pretty hard. Yeah, he took that big hit and he's just grimaced ever since. Davis that. is up and skating off. And you can see so much uncomfort yeah. in the Breyer's face as he stands up. The, the score at 37 minutes and 49 seconds is 3-1 in favour of the Telford Tigers. The period's been ended earlier to allow the resurfacing because of blood on the ice from the collision between Max Babrea and his own player Danny Davis. So an end-to-end -end period, Guildford defended incredibly well on the two Telford power plays that came out of that and just the one goal from the point from Dan Scott. Well, Dan Scott, you know, we've mentioned time and time again about getting his shot away, and he's, he's done it two or three times tonight, and he's been rewarded with a goal. Guildford, as you say, have defended very well, especially when they've been short-handed, but they're not getting their passes together, and I guess that's what their coach is going to be seeing in the yeah. dressing room now, get your passes together. And fair play to Telford, the execution of these shots has been so much better in the last few games. It's nice to see, yeah, they, they, they've picked up the game and they're, they're getting the shots on that. I still think on the power play they're trying to be too clever, it's just my opinion, 
Uh, but yeah, I think I think you know, Guildford have got it all to do. Another credit for Telford at the moment is, of course, Sam Zajac. We mentioned that he's carrying an injury, so hasn't iced much that period. You've got Max Babrea not at maximum fitness at the moment because of the incident from the year uh, earlier in the game. And also, of course, you've not got Nathan Salem icing tonight. So really encouraging that there are a couple of goals up without those key guys. Well, that's right. And it shows the strength and depth of the team. And the guys have picked the game up and they're rallying round. Although the short bench, as you say, carrying a few injuries. And we'll have to wait and see what happens with Max in this interval because he took a couple of, he took a big hit and it's injured him. Uh, we've seen him limping slightly since that. So as we head back to the action, we've got another couple of minutes of the second period. Then it'll be a straight turn round into the third period action. One minute 30 seconds remaining in the second period and it'll be a straight turnaround Pressure up to the point the Silverthorne prevents the shot getting away from Ericsson he gets this one away and a pad save this time from the left leg pad of Sam Gospel Melocherino skates a vice, pats it off to Duggan on the left side, skates it backwards into the end zone, just regains control of the puck, so he's not going to be offside, but he wasn't confident on it as he went back. Duggan passes back to last, Myers. Last five seconds of the second period, just going to wind down now. Hill tips it forward. And then Duggan tips it in, and that's the hoot over the end of the second period. So now there'll be a straight turnaround. The netminders will change ends. Zabo, Miller, Silverthorne. Zabo tries to win it, but it's won back by the Guildford centre man. That's Ericsson. Sends it back. Tipped in, it goes off at the bench. Comes across, and the pass to Babrea didn't connect, and the puck goes deep into Telford's end zone. What you were speaking before about lighters and whatever, you know, that's the problem with these modern day helmets. You can't get a fag behind you. You'd <laughs> be straight back out there with a couple of puffs on a wood vine, he's back out. <laughs> we joke, of course, we joke. Yeah. <laughs> Although, how true that was in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> massive, shot massive shot comes in and it hits the... Ericsson. Ericsson skates at the blue line, winds up, lets a belter of a shot go at Sam Gospel. He's got good line of sight and in the catching mitt just holds the puck on. And as you said, Alan, with great confidence. Yep, yep. And it's interesting, as, as Weaver's been back, what, with three games or so, he... He gets smoother and more relaxed each time. Toe Matt pulls Toe inside, drags it past Dan Scott, pushes in, and Sam Gospel makes the save. Again. Th this kind of game will, will tell on the players. The stick, Phillips held the stick and the penalty's gone. Yep. So, we've got a delayed penalty. Shot comes in from Silverthorne. The save's made. Oh, no, and now Zabel, Zabel let the puck go just after the whistle there. Duggan had a dig, Duggan but Miller dig. held up Duggan, and Duggan wants to go, but Miller's holding onto his stick as if to say, no need. Zabo's helmet's ended up off. Puck goes around the boards. Weaver dumps it in. Miller steps around behind the net. Telford on the power play. Weaver and Babrea, the back two. Hill reaches around at the back of the net. Silverthorne, Hill and Miller at the front two because, of course, Peter Zarbo's in the penalty box. Silverthorne off to Miller, takes it over the blue line, puts it to Hill, puts it into Silverthorne, walks it in, and shoots it and scores! That was an amazing play! Silverthorne cuts across the front after that passing work between Miller and Hill to generate a power play goal just 30 seconds into the power play. Executed brilliantly by that line of forwards. Silverthorne gets the glory. Assists on Hill and Miller to make it 4-1 in favour of the Telford Tigers on 51 minutes and 55 seconds. Weaver on the point. Just takes the shot, and that was a holding. Got to be. Uh, Erickson. Erickson tied up there with Adam Taylor, uh, nothing. but nothing called. Duggan drives down the right side, shoots across. It goes behind Sam Gospel's net, picked up off the boards. Uh, Carroll walking. Oh, and he took two, two or three steps around, got the shot away. Erickson, it was there that walked it in, and now Silverthorne swings back. Nothing shining for Guildford tonight. Maynard forward, puck bounces out. It's very untidy as it's through neutralised. Corral picks it up. Oh my God! Zabo gets two attempts, and the puck's still in the air. Miller skates in front. There was a fluff by the defence pass, and suddenly Zabo attempted to capitalise on it. Wall made the save. The puck dropped down, got a second swing of it, went into the corner, and now there's wrestling and pushing and shoving in the corner. This is, this is it. Look, it's the it's the and a holding the stick penalty called on Zabo, is it? it, it yes. Is it? Yeah, no, Zabo's going. 
Held into the boards by Corral, but Plant powers his way through. Corral picks the puck down out of the air, backhands it back to his defenseman. Danny Myers behind the net, skates the puck out. 26 seconds, Myers on the stretch pass. Scott intervenes, takes a deflection into the corner. There's a battle in the corner now between Scott and 74, which is Matt Toe. And there's another Comes in front, from save from Gospel. Yeah, Gospel's got to be up for yeah. man of the match, I'd have yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah, Gospel and McKinney for me. Puck comes across the front. That's five seconds, it's all over. And a good, good win for the Tigers. Guildford hold on to the puck behind the net. Everybody skates away. And at the end of the game is the Telford Tigers four. Guildford Flames won in quite a convincing win. So a great result and a fantastic performance from the boys. I thought it was an all-round outstanding performance by everybody. Uh, our forwards obviously got it done offensively, but our D were really good tonight. We lost Sammy Zajac and Martin Andre early in the game. Uh, so when we played with four for the night. They battled really hard. They blocked shots. You know, they, they moved the puck up well. And behind them, Sam Gospel was was doing what he's been doing over the last few weeks. There must have been a few bruises in the dressing room as well. I think Danny Davies took a shot. I know Max took a, a big hit, which sort of knocked him for six. So quite a challenge on the bench. Uh, yeah, I think so. At times, you know, you've got to think on your feet. But in terms of where we are, we lost the game last week because we didn't block shots. So today we got Wee's blocks always a, a bunch. You know, Danny Day, D makes a good shot block, and we need guys doing that all day long. And they're not the only blocks we made tonight. You know, other guys got in shooting lanes, and it takes away good scoring. It takes away uh, simple plays of getting the puck to the net, and uh, you, you consistently sap belief when you you're making it hard for them to get pucks through. And the finishes were there again tonight. We had some fantastic goals scored by the boys. To be honest, I thought we should have uh, killed the game by the end of the first. I thought we missed a lot of good opportunities. Um, and through the second, quite similar, I said to the guys in here, um, I think this game should be dead, but it wasn't. And uh, I was pleased with the way we played the third. We, we didn't want to give up anything. Um, and obviously, I think we got our reward on the power play. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. A convincing 4-1 win for the Telford Tigers against the Guildford Flames. The next game is against the Hull Pirates next Sunday at 6pm. Tickets available online at tigershockeyuk.com. This is Rinkside with Red Hockey.